In Ephesians chapter 6, praise God, we're going to read a verse here. As the Holy Ghost continues, and he's kind of led me to go around in the various churches connected with us, praise God. Been on the road, actually, for weeks. He's had me ministering on the subjects, praise God, going back to basic things. Because the last two and a half years, a lot of people's foundations got shaken. And they got knocked off their basics, praise God. Bring them back to basics so that they can walk again in the authority that they should. Now in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brother. Obviously, you don't start a conversation with finally. So uh, we're assuming you're going to read chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the first part of 6. But he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, you know, joy the Lord's strength, so you started down the strength road today. But the New Testament is translated from the Greek, and in Paul's day, when, when, the, in, when the scriptures were penned, the dominant language in the world was Greek. It was the business language of the day. The other one was Latin. Amen. So the New Testament is translated from the Greek, and so I use Greek to help you, uh, praise God, deeper understand what it is being said. So the Greek word here for strong is the Greek word endumenomu. Endunamamu means to empower. Empower yourself in the Lord. It means to enable, enable yourself in the Lord. It means to increase in strength, increase your strength in the Lord. It means to make strong, amen? Well, what is the indication of this? It's indicating that without doing the things we're about to talk about today, if you don't do these things, you'll be weak. The other thing what this, this phrase is telling you is that there are things you do, not God do for you. You see, oftentimes, you know, uh, God, since God just won't defend himself, he ain't going to show up. And I've only read one time in the scripture where God defended himself. Job got up there and he, you know, Job went through so much stuff that finally he, he began to put his mouth on God. And God says, God stood him up and said, now, uh, since you know so much, tell me how you create a planet. Tell me how you hang stars. Tell me. <laughs> Amen. He said he was straight. Hallelujah. So, but since God won't defend himself, praise God, he's an easy target with people every time something bad happens. I thought God had my back. God, how come you let this happen to me? Why did these things happen the way they did? Amen. But they tend to only uh, look at scriptures that will only seemingly point to God and never look at scriptures that point to themselves. Because the scripture said what? It says that you and God work together. Amen. Now the one thing I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you God's going to take care of his side of stuff. The real problem is us taking care of our side of stuff. Now, the, the other issue about this, you know, and I stand here oftentimes after service, as I will today, praise God, our offerings at the end uh, today. Praise the Lord for those of you who wish to give. Uh, but, you know, and so after service, uh, many times I'm up here in the front, uh, and the people will come up to me, and they'll ask me. They'll say, they'll say uh, Bishop or Pastor, will you, will you pray for me? Okay, what you want me to pray for? Pray that God give me a desire to want him and his word. Or give me a desire to want to study the scripture. And typically, now I try and be real nice when people say that. Uh, but you know, you don't need prayer to have a desire to go to the mall. You don't need prayer to have a desire to go to a football or a sporting event. You don't need an anointing to do something you want to do. The real question is, what do you want to do? Now, admittedly, the word of God is an acquired taste. See, the more you eat of it, the more you like it, and the more you want. Hallelujah. But see, if you're not going to take much of it, then praise God. And so he tells you here, amen, be strong because you can be weak in the Lord. 
So he said, in Dumino, increase in strength. Praise God. Now also notice this phrase, in the Lord. That, that word, praise God, or that phrase, praise the Lord, is huperosh. Praise God. That's that word talking about, uh, amen, authority here. Because the word Lord is the word kurios. And kurios means supreme in authority. It means master. It means controller. Amen. That's why I told you what authority means. Because authority means prominence. Authority means superiority. Authority means, praise God, uh, uh, it has the right and privilege to declare and have it happen. Amen. He's a supreme in authority, the kurios, Jesus is. In other words, there's none higher than him. There's none higher than his word, praise God. And he should be our controller. Okay, amen. See, there are a lot of people calling themselves Christians and I really question if they really are Christians. Amen. Because when you are really are a Christian, the Lord's in control. You are not in control. Amen. And I question if they're really Christians when they raise authorities because the word authority also goes beyond, praise God, the tense I just told you. As we'll see, this word authority or authorities also extends into natural, there's natural authority and spiritual authority. And praise God, this even extends to governments. Amen. Amen. So when people put what God's word said and what Jesus said about something, up with whatever the authorities or political stuff of the, of the day says and they make them equal or, or even greater they have become idol worshipers they have made that an idol thank you Lord Jesus now how do you get strong well you know we did a little strengthening in the day that helped somebody up here today Somebody sat down today and praised God. I don't shook all that stuff off me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But let's talk about some ways in which, in which you do get strong. Praise the Lord. And now turn to Romans chapter 4. Again, you can be strong in the Lord. You can be weak in the Lord. Okay. Strong in the supreme authority or weak in him. In Romans chapter 4, we read about a man called the father of faith in verse 20. Abraham staggered, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God promised he was able also to do. Strong in the Lord also means being strong in faith. Greek word for faith is pistis, trust, confidence, belief, assurance, glory to God. So being strong in his supreme authority means you are strong in faith. 1 John 5, 4 says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Praise God. So it must be strong since it overcomes the world. Now, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Faith in what? Well, faith in the things the scripture says. What does it say? Well, first of all, how about faith in Jesus' authority rights? He's got the right to tell you what to do. He has the right to tell demon spirits what to do. Tell them to bow down. Praise God. He's the highest authority of all. Amen. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. Oh, give me three hallelujahs this morning. Faith, praise God, in what the scripture said happened. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 tells us, Jesus was found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So because of that, God also have highly hoopersules, the Greek word there, elevated him above others, raised him to the highest position. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And given him a onoma, name, authority, character, which is over or above every name. That at the onoma, the authority of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, in earth, under the earth. Every tongue shall acknowledge 
that Jesus, the anointed one, is the kurios. He is the supreme authority to the glory of God the Father. Well, amen. Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing. Two hearings. The first hearing is with the ear. The second one is with the heart. So faith comes when you hear about Jesus has authority in earth, heaven, and hell. All three realms, he is the highest authority. The more you hear this, the more you can become like Abraham, strong in faith or strong in the Lord. Well, here's some more. Turn to Ephesians chapter one. Praise God. In the first chapter of Ephesians, amen, we can read verse 19. It says over here, praise the Lord. And what is the exceeding greatness or, or the, praise God, large magnitude of his supernatural ability or dunamis to us who believe? Amen. Have any believers in here? Amen. According to the efficiency and operation, praise God actually here, of his mighty strength, Kratos, the word strength, which he wrought in the anointed one, Jesus. When? This is when it happened. When he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above. This is not close. All principality, RK is the word principality in the Greek. That means chief. Anything that's the head. All chief spirits, praise God. And power, this Greek word power is actually the word exousia, it's the word authority, amen. That means all, even all governments. See, Satan has used government as long as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has been here to oppress the church. He did it in Jesus' day. It was them who put him on the cross. It was government who took the disciples and said, we're going to kill you, you preach anymore. It was the Roman government that boiled Christians in oil, tacked them on the cross, crucified them. And has been Satan's tool has been used from government to shut down the church and attack the church as long as the church has been here, including recently. See, so this word says here, authorities, praise God, keep reading. Amen. And might, this word might is dunamis, supernatural ability, dominion. Every authority that is mentioned, not only in this world, but in the coming world. Amen. He is high even over the coming world. And it put everything under his feet, gave him to be the boss over all to the church. So Jesus should be the boss. Should be the boss. If he ain't the boss, I really doubt you, Christian. I really do. Amen. The church is his body. Didn't we say that with communion? The church is his body, the fullness, which means the completion of him that filleth all in all. Meaning what? That the church fills in when Jesus left and sat at the right hand of the throne of God. The church took over his role in the earth. He was the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher all rolled up in the one. Glory to God. And now, hallelujah, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher is collectively through the body of Christ in the earth still doing the work he, he did. Glory to God. So amen. So amen. So faith comes by hearing and hearing. Meditation on the word. Remember with Joshua 1 8, God told Joshua, Joshua was so scared. God had to tell Joshua three times in just a few verses. Be strong and of good courage. I'm gonna tell you again, Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Joshua, I'm gonna tell you again. Be strong and of good courage. Why? Man was afraid. But he told him how to deal with it in Joshua 1 8. He said, take the book of the law, which is the word of God. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you meditate that day and night. So that you may observe what to do. You will make your way prosperous then. You'll have good success. Why? Because the word is supernatural. What comes with it is the wisdom of God. What comes with it is the knowledge of God. 
supernaturally as you med meditate the word, what will happen is that things will open up to you in the natural realm of what to do when you meditate the book. Now turn to Mark 16. Praise God. Give me three more praise the Lord, somebody. In the 16th chapter of Mark, Jesus is about to speak. Now, I don't know what you may feel about this. I'm going to tell you what I feel about this, what I know about this. I will take Jesus' word over what any man may say anywhere else. I will take Jesus' word over what denominations say, governments say, people say, groups of people say, universities say. If Jesus said it, that's enough for me. We are about to read what he said. So again, see, I question whether people are really Christians or not, because if they're a Christian, their position would be what I just said. Why? Well, I mean, remember what Jesus said there in the book of John. Jesus said, praise God, in the book of John, well, over there, he said that the things that I say, I only say what the Father told me to say. I only speak what the Father tells me to speak. And so, praise God, amen. So the words we're about to read from Jesus is actually the words of Jehovah. It is God the Father speaking through the Son to me and you, and we now have a choice. We have a choice to either, praise God, hear, hear what he said, receive what he said, believe what he said, repeat what he said, and act, act as though his word is true. Five elements of faith. All right, Jesus, go on and speak to us. Jesus said here then in verse 15, he said unto them, go ye into all the world, not just your neighborhood, not just your city. Preach the gospel to every creature, everybody. Notice that verse 15, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, so, so, so. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs. Now, the word signs is interesting because the Greek word for sign is somion. Somion, praise God, means miracles, wonders, indications, praise God, of a believer. These somions follow believers. In other words, praise God, what we're about to read goes to everybody who is a believer. So we already have seen every believer, Jesus said and the Father said, has indications of signs, wonders, and miracles. But they're not, all, they're not always what you think they are. And I'm going to show you. Praise God. It shall follow them that believe in my onoma, in my authority, with my character. They are me in the earth. Shall they, number one, Throw out the devil. You don't need me to exercise the devil. You can do it yourself in Jesus' authority. That's a sign for every believer. I know it's called a miracle because you could not whoop a baby demon with all the strength you got. They are empowered, but you in his authority Glory to God. That authority has been transferred to you. Jesus took down devils like it was nothing. Glory to God. And what he said, if you believe, you take down devils like it's nothing. So in my name, they shall throw out the devil. Now keep reading. Glory to God. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, the Greek word for new is kainos. Kainos, praise God, means fresh. 
the word tongue is glossy or glossy. Glossy means language that you do not acquire naturally Amen. with natural means. Amen. What did he tell you? What he told you, praise God, that the new tongues that he's referring to here is not that you stop cussing because you got saved. Although you certainly should stop cussing. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't mean now that you got a supernatural ability to learn French or Spanish or something else. Fresh, some, uh, fresh, the word fresh here means something that does not exist in the natural realm. New tongues is new supernatural language. It means it is not of this world because these signs follow them that believe. So what he said was every single Christian, every one of them, if they believe, can speak with these, with these language not given by man. Every Christian, every Christian can speak with tongues. A lot of confusion has been where people read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and they said, well, people have the gift of tongues. No such thing. Don't say gift of tongues. It says there are diverse kinds of tongues in a list of gifts of the spirit, prophecy, Miracles, healing, praise God, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, all ministry gifts to minister to people. But he said here, every believer, praise God, can operate with these signs. First Corinthians 14 says that this sign of speaking with tongues is a sign to the unbeliever. Said it right there in First Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Guess what? It is people running around looking for, I'm looking for some, some wonder, some signs, some, something to see. Every time you pray in tongues, you are doing something Moses could not do. You're doing something Joshua couldn't do. You're doing something Abraham couldn't do. You're doing something none of all those you think powerful Old Testament prophets, amen, and apostles of God or prophets of God, none of them had the ability to pray a new fresh language given by God. Every time you pray in tongues, you are exercising a miracle. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God. Now, why this is really important, because I'm talking about being strong in the Lord then. Turn to Jude, the book of Jude, the book just before Revelation, it's the last book of the Bible, just before it. Book of Jude is only one chapter in Jude. And let's read this a little bit more. We're talking about being strong in the Lord. Now Jude, praise God, and I don't have time to teach the entire book of Jude. If I had time, I would. I'd just start with verse 1 and teach all of it. But I'm going to pick up with verse 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. That's where we are. Mockers going, uh-huh. Yeah, y'all been saying about this Jesus coming for however long, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right? Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual or just of the flesh, having not the Spirit, capital S. They don't have the Holy Spirit. person who was not born again doesn't have the Holy Spirit. But you, beloved, now watch this term, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now before I go further, the word ghost is the Greek word pneuma. The word spirit is the Greek word pneuma. Both of them are. 
And so when you say Holy Ghost, you're saying Holy Spirit. When you say Holy Spirit, you're saying Holy Ghost. That's what they're saying. Now, let's go back here and let's break this verse down a little bit. He said, they don't have the Spirit, but you, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. Circle that word holy. Hagios, that word holy. Something that is holy is sacred. God's word said, hallelujah, amen. This is a holy thing. When you pray, and the word in is the Greek word en, it means by. So when you pray in the Holy Spirit or you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are doing something that God said is holy. And it said that God's called it a miracle and a wonder. So when you pray in other tongues, I want you to understand what you're doing. You have hooked up, praise God, because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. And you have shed just your natural self. And you have hooked up with the Holy Ghost inside. And the Holy Ghost inside you then begins with your working together with him begins to do something which we're going to read here in just a minute. Praise God. But before I read that stuff, let's finish Jude. Know what he said, you build up yourself. So what are you doing? When you build yourself up, you are improving yourself. When you build yourself up, you are strengthening yourself. When you build yourself up, you are making yourself strong. Are you still with me here? So build up you with your holy faith because praying in tongues requires faith. It requires faith to open your mouth and begin to speak out a language you don't know. You don't understand, but you yield to the one inside you. To trust that what you're doing is not crazy in man's eyes because they don't have the Holy Ghost. But God said, this is a holy thing and it is a miracle from me. Why is this important? Yeah, I'll get there in a minute. Praise God. Besides being holy, that's good enough for me. Let's keep going though. Holy Ghost, there's not a period there. Keeping yourselves in the love of God. You mean to tell me that praying in the Holy Ghost, faith and love are all connected together. You better believe it. Galatians 5, 6 says faith and urge. It's the Greek word there for faith operates by love. That word in urge means it is made efficient by love. So the more you walk in the love of God, the more you are able to walk with the faith of God because if you don't walk in love, which means you put others ahead of your own needs. You put others first instead of yourself. Come on, somebody. You decide to forgive others. If you will not forgive, God said, I will not forgive you and your faith will not work. Now, are you listening to me? Praise God. Faith takes no account of a wrong suffered it. 1 Corinthians 13. Don't have time to teach the whole thing, but you can go to 1 Corinthians 13 and find out about that agape love. So love is connected to faith and love is really connected to praying in the Holy Ghost. That holy thing a spirit-filled believer does. Now let's keep reading here. He says, keep yourself. Keep yourself means then that you can just let yourself go and not function the love of God. You can decide to become selfish. You can, you can decide to become, this is all about me. It, you can decide, I ain't forgiving you. You can do all of those things because the, the whole opposite of the love of God is selfishness. I got me on my mind. So this, this is what I feel. This is what I think. This is what I want. It's getting, starting to get quiet in here. Looking for 
the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. You're looking under his mercy. We praise God. He's been merciful to you. So that means then I'm going to be merciful to everybody else. All this then. It's what helps a person be strong in faith. You cannot be strong in the Lord and weak in love. You cannot be strong in the Lord and weak in faith. And you cannot be strong in the Lord the way you should fully if you don't pray in the Holy Ghost in tongues. Now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter, praise God. Oh, before I read there, turn to chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, then I'll go over where I'm going. Give me three more hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, and we're going to read verse 29. Praise God. I don't read one, I don't want verse 29. And I want 2 Corinthians, that's what I want. Something wrong with that. Second Corinthians. <laughs> yeah, Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. Chapter 11, verse 29. Now, of course, if you read the verses prior to it, which I don't have time to do, because according to the clock, I only got 12 minutes left, and I'm just, I'm just getting started. Now, I don't like this clock. <laughs> Amen. But if you read earlier verses, he, you know, Paul talked about how he was five times beaten with stripes. He was stoned, shipwrecked. Okay, and a bunch of folk would have been, God, why? I thought you had my back, right? And all that. Praise the Lord. And people would begin to become weak. But Paul says in verse 29, who is weak? He said, I'm not. Amen. See that? He said, I'm not weak. In other words, I'm strong. Amen. Despite all this stuff I've been through, all the stuff that happened to me, yeah. I am not weak. I'm not backing up because all this stuff happened. He said, I'm not weak, he says. And who is scandalous though? Okay, who is offended? Who steps back? Who's going to fall into sin? Not me. I'm not offended and I burn not. I don't even get angry. Ooh. Well, how in the world did this man get that way? Well, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Praise his holy name. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, Paul said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than all of y'all. Paul was a southerner, praise God. I was preaching in Florida yesterday. I said that they laughed. So I'm in the north, so I guess y'all not laughing. He said, but I thank my God. I speak with tongues. I'm thanking God. I speak with tongues more than all of you. Actually, that text there, all of the church of Corinth combined. Well, man, if that, guy, if that guy speaks with tongues more than the whole church combined, amen, that means this guy gets up, he's breakfasting and praising in tongues. And when he's walking, he's praising in tongues. If he's dunking, he's riding, he's praising in tongues. If he ain't talking to somebody, he's praying in tongues. But guess what happens? That praying in the spirit with that new tongue helped make him strong. You are connected to God and praying in the Holy Ghost is another thing that gives you strength. You're operating in miracle working ability, glory to God, hallelujah. Doing something Moses didn't have available to him, Abraham did not have available to him, others didn't have available unto him, even during Jesus' walk, Jesus didn't even. Hallelujah. This is something that came about when the Holy Ghost came in the earth and became our comforter. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm sending you a comforter. He'll be with you forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I thank God. Amen. Now notice the same chapter. Note what he says in verse 2. In fact, let me say verse 4. I'll get back to verse 2. He that speaketh in a tongue edifies himself. The word edifies in the Greek means he builds his own house. He gets stronger. What are we talking about? We're talking about being strong in the Lord. Somebody who is strong in the Lord, somebody who prays in tongues a lot, 
See? He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. When you prophesy, you edify the church. But we ain't talking about the church now. We're talking about him. Then notice what he said in verse 2. He that speaks in a tongue doesn't speak to men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Natural man doesn't. We know that he doesn't have the spirit. However, in the spirit, he speaks musterion. He speaks secrets. What kind of secrets? He's talking about things relative to you when you pray. He knows the plan Satan has set up to take you out tomorrow. He knows the stuff that Satan is trying to use to get at you in some other kind of way. He knows about the stuff where he's trying to get to your family. He knows about, praise God, all the things that enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy that Satan has kept hidden from you. You don't know nothing about, but God, hallelujah, knows them in advance and help you take down the devil's ambush ambush before the ambush. Not only that, praise God, other divine secrets, things to pray for, amen. Pray for other sister so-and-so. She needs help. You don't know it, but when you pray in the Holy Ghost, God moves in the earth because somebody asked him. He's waiting on somebody to ask him so he can show himself strong through hallelujah. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, he'll take your supernatural utterance and then he will then use that ask as the Holy Ghost said it and then help your sister or brother. That's part of rightly discerning the body. Thank you, Jesus. See, be strong in the supreme authority. Well, we're talking about so many ways you become strong. This is one of those ways. Praise God. I mean, notice in verse 15, the same chapter. He says, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding or with my mind also. We do both. We pray with our minds as far as we know, as far as our teaching has given us that we know. Praise God. But we also pray with the Spirit. We also do the same. We sing with the Spirit, with understanding also. In other words, a real Christian operates thoroughly in both realms. You operate in the natural realm, and you operate in the supernatural realm. Praise God. Let me go back to, let me go back to the book of Jude for a minute. Glory to God. Anybody getting anything out of this? Amen. Now, once again, in that chapter, that's only one chapter in Jude, but this time we'll take a look at, notice that uh, verse three there in Jude. It says, Beloved, when I gave, gave all diligence to write you of the common deliverance, it was needful for me to write to you and to exhort you. Exhort you to do what? That you should earnestly contend for, contend means fight for, fight for the pistis, Fight for the trust, the belief, the confidence, the assurance, which was once delivered unto the saints. He told you, you're going to have to get up and fight. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You don't get victory without a battle. And one way we fight our battle is that we pray in the Holy Ghost. Another way we fight our battle, we dance before the Lord with joy. Another way we fight our battle is that we walk in love despite the offender coming against us. Hallelujah. Another way in which we fight our battle is that we use in faith the authority of Jesus. Then you're strong in the supreme authority. Glory to God. Anybody here want to be strong in the Lord? Well, he said, you got to contend for all this. Now, I told you Galatians 5, 6, which says, and again, I'm going to tell you where it is, the same time, but that clock is really moving. So, but you can look it up. Faith worketh by, is made active and efficient, energy. Worketh, that's how we're working. By love. In other words, there is no way you can be strong in the Lord and have strife. Now, if you are the devil knowing that, what would you do as strategy? Stir up as much stuff as possible. 
cause as much people to fight, talk fighting, get involved in it, strife, focus on everything but the love of God and the word of God, help, help them to forget who they really are and what they have. That would be Satan's strategy, which is why I keep telling you certain things. Now, you might get mad at me about it. All the thing I'm doing is preaching what the scripture said. I didn't write none of this. I wish I had. I ain't smart enough to write all this. I mean, glory to God. This came from God, strong almighty. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul's commending that church. He says in verse 3, we are bound to thank God always for you because your faith groweth exceedingly. Ah, you mean my faith can get bigger? Yeah. That word exceedingly means that it increases above normal degree. Praise God. Your faith is growing exponentially. And the charity, the word charity is the Greek word agape, love of God. The love of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. That word aboundeth means that it even superbounds. So they got, he, Paul says, man, I'm commending you church because y'all got big faith because y'all got big love. And your faith continues to grow, which means you continue to get stronger because there's that nexus. But then he continues on, he says in verse 4, so that we ourselves glory in you. We're bragging on you, church of God, for your patience and faith. Oh, he tossed in another word. Now this word is a cuss word to Christians. I mean, this is a big time cuss word. They don't want to hear no Christian. They don't want to hear nothing about patience. Lord, I want you to bless me with patience and I want you to bless me right now. <laughs> patience is a time thing. Patience requires time. Patience means to stay the same even if, even if bam, bam, bam's coming your way. I mean, I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to be unmoved, praise God. Hallelujah. I refuse to be moved by what I'm looking at and what I'm hearing and what people are saying and what my body's telling me and what my pride tells me and everything else tells me. I'm just going to stay on the word of God because that's where the life is. That's where the victory is. And I'm going to keep on believing in that. So I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Faith and patience. Now, Hebrews 6, 12 says, follow them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. That's how you get them. Amen. We could do a study on promises. On it. I've done it before. I'm sure we'll do it again. But he says faith and patience, praise God, when in all your persecutions. Now persecutions is when people, there's a difference between that and tribulations. Persecution is when Satan uses people to come up against you. He said, you have faith in God and you remain constant even when Satan is using folk and the folks Satan really likes to use is the folks you think should be the last ones I have to have patience with. Amen. Good preaching. Woo! I'm going to say amen to myself. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Satan loves to get the persons close to you to be yielded to the devil. He'll use Christians against you. He'll use your mama, daddy, sister, brother, uncle, friend, best girlfriend, best boyfriend, best somebody close to you. I mean, when I first started this church, amen, the church was split in its first six months by one of my best friends. See, Satan used people close to you because those are the ones your guard is down and those are the ones that hurt when you get hit. Rest of them, I mean, somebody else, somebody else, some, some you don't really care about, they do something, well, you know, that's, they, they just need to be saved, let me pray for them. I mean, you no, know, but somebody right 
your son, your daughter, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, somebody close to you now when somebody like that, ooh, cut. See, so he said, we're committing you for your patience and faith in your persecutions. Next, read the next couple, next couple of words. And tribulations. Now, those are circumstances. Amen. Circumstances is when I had one yesterday. <laughs> Amen. I got stuck in the airport yesterday for over five hours. Amen. I didn't get home to one in the morning or something like that. Whatever time we got in. One, one, thirty in the morning, whatever it was. Something like about five hours <laughs> stuck. Amen. Circumstance. I got to get home. I got to preach the word of faith in the morning. I need to be fresh as a daisy, ready to go. <laughs> They're expecting me to feed them with the word of God, and they don't want to have no excuses as to why he ain't got no anointing. <laughs> he don't have no revelation, no other. Like, uh -huh, I told you he ain't got nothing. I'm out of here. I'm on. Right? Oh, well, things, circumstances that happen to you. Car breaks down. Okay, you can name all the list. The list is endless. All the stuff that can come your way. Now, he said you have patience and faith with that too. So you got patience and faith with stuff and people. Situations and people. You got big faith and good love. And big love, that's why you can do it. When you're adding patience with it. Be steadfast. You decide, my foot's going in the ground. I don't care how they act. I'm not going to act, act up either. Sure enough, praise God. Had some people, man, yesterday, while being stuck in the airport, give us problems yesterday. I mean, act, just act it up, you know. In a, and you want to, in the flesh, you want to, let me show you how I fight my battle. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's that what you want to do. But instead, decided we decided to do something else. Praise God. It also talks about, it gives you strength. That's joy. We decided to laugh. It's a decision to do that. Ooh, I need some more time. Let's keep reading. Tribulations that you endure. Guess what? That is an indication of the righteous judgment of God. That you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you suffer. If you can't go through something and you're just going to fall, you're not worthy of the kingdom. I didn't write that. No, verse 6. Sin is a righteous thing with God to repay tribulation to people tripling trouble in you. God says, you let me handle them. Don't you try and handle them. You let me handle this. Now, we don't want to let God handle stuff because God don't move fast enough for us. We want God to take them down now and take them down hard. And you don't want to give God that time because you want them to get it right now. And you know God has mercy. And he'll, he'll give them plenty of time to get it right. You don't want them to get it right because then, shoot, I didn't get them. <laughs> Woo! You know I'm telling the truth, don't you? You sure don't want to pray for your enemies like Jesus said to do because God didn't have mercy with them and they might turn around. I'm going to kick their butt. Do what they did to me. And God, this circumstance happened to me. I thought you had my back. And see, this last two and a half years, it showed you who, who really had and who really didn't. Because you can't tell by looking at people. It's only when circumstances show up Big time worldwide. Across the globe, there's been a major reduction in church attendance. Across the globe. Paul wrote in Thessalonians that just before the turning or, or showing forth of the Antichrist, there would be a great falling away of the church. 
got time for that one. All right. Let me come down the home stretch. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go back to where I started. But I, I need approval for five to ten extra minutes. Do I have that? All right. So that verse 10. So now we get it. Okay. Now we've seen some of the stuff that when he said finally, now we know he's talked some other stuff, right? So he said, in doom the move. Be strong. Empower yourself in the Lord. Praise God. And, or the supreme authority, in the power. Now, the word power here is kratos. Kratos means vigor. means dominion and strength. So you, not God, you empower yourself by doing the stuff we're talking about. You empower yourself in the supreme authority and in his dominion, his strength of his iskus. Iskus is the word might, his ability. When you, Jesus has the ability to petition the Father with stuff your head doesn't know when you pray in the Holy Ghost. That word iskus also means his forcefulness. You be forceful spiritually. Continue on. Put on then the whole armor, cause you can have you can have on half the armor. Aren't you glad that I that I have on all of my clothes? <laughs> if I only had the top half of my clothes on, and I didn't have the bottom half of my clothes on, you would probably go oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> so it's not a good thing to have half your clothes on. So he's going to then do what? He's going to make a pitch for make sure you get everything. All of these things. So he says, glory to God. Put on all of the armor. You mean armor? This is protection for me. Put on the whole armor of God that you may histeme. Praise God. Histeme. Continue. Hold up. Cross face to face. Wiles, methodia, methodology of the enemy. Jesus told you in Mark 4, 13, part of his methodology. We know already from, from today, praise God, some of them. But he said in Mark chapter 4 in the parable of the sower. We back to that again? Yep. Jesus said, if you don't know this, you don't know nothing. That's what he said in verse 13. Amen. So he said, they heard the word. These are, these are folks who hear the preaching. They hear the word, but when affliction, see, all them bad circumstances, see, they get into fear instead of faith. Or persecution, when people mess with you. Amen. Now, when people mess with you, you know, Jesus said something to his disciples that was kind of astounding. Bill, I need to, come here. Come on, Bill, come on up. Bill with me. Bill been with me for decades. You looking good too, man. I mean, boy, Bill, Bill, Bill. <laughs> My man, boom. <laughs> All right. Now Jesus said this in Matthew 18. He says it's also in Luke. You know, Peter thought he was being spiritual. Peter said, "Now, Lord, if my brother offends me." How often shall I forgive him? Seven times? You know, in a day, single day. Seven times in a day? He thought he was being like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so think about this now. What do you ask Jesus? Somebody does me wrong. He hits me first time. Most of us, okay, I'm walking forgiveness. Same day he hit me a second time. All right, I'm going to forgive him. He hits me a third time in the same day. Most Christians I know have a three strikes rule. <laughs> Strike three, you out of here. It's time to, time to we're going to throw down now. Right? And Jesus countered that with, no, 70 times seven. Now, in the Luke account, when the disciples heard that, they said, well, Lord, increase our faith. I need more faith, more 
hearing the word, more praying in the Holy Ghost, more decisions, all that. I need more of this in order to do that. Because what he was saying is, there is no place where you get to draw the line and say, this is it now, let's throw down. There ain't no line there. Your flesh don't want to hear this at all. I know. Come on, somebody. See, real faith is connected to real forgiveness. It's the absence of fear. Glory to God. Absence of selfishness. What I want, what I need. What I want to do. Now, let's finish up. Almost done. Y'all give me 10 minutes. I'm going to be pretty close. So put on all of that armor that you made then histomamy against the strategies of the devil. Praise God. Or methodology. Remember, those methods again in Mark 4 was affliction. The first one, I almost forgot. Flicks ones, the first one was affliction, then persecution. Mark 4. Right? Then distractions or cares of this world. Deceitfulness of riches. Lust. Anything else. Enters in, chokes the word, makes it non-productive. Now, because he goes on to say then. For we wrestle not against people. He's been saying that all day. But against principalities, there's that RK again, chief spirits, powers, exousia, which means, praise God, anything that sets itself to be the boss, including government, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, that's Satan himself, against spiritual depravity in high places. Therefore, take unto you all of the armor of God that you may anti- Praise God here. Antihistamine, which means that you may resist in the evil day. That word evil there means, I'm going to start with the Greek just because my time is short. But that word evil day means the day you're hurt. So they hurt me. It hurt me. Circumstance hurt me. These people hurt me. See, he said you have to put on all this so that when you get hurt, you can stand against Satan's strategy. Anybody here ever been hurt by people? Anybody ever been hurt by circumstance? And guess what? It's going to keep on hurting unless you get strong in the Lord. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor that you may resist in the day of hurt, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Once again, hissed Amy, so that you continue in what? The victory. Stand therefore is referring to the fact that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. He's already defeated the enemy for you. You are now in his stead in the earth. So you are the person who has control in and is in charge. And then Paul uses an analogy of a Roman soldier. And the reason why he uses the analogy of a Roman soldier as I close here in this teaching is because they were at the time being governed by Rome. So they very much got this analogy. I wouldn't use this analogy today, but I can tell you exactly what he was telling you. So he said, stand therefore, have on the belt the truth, John 17, 17. He said, everything starts with the word. So when he, she, it, them, circumstance, go to the book, what does it say? Not what CBS News says. Not what your mom and daddy, sister, brother, friend say. Now, what your racial group says, or what sexual group says, or anything else says, what does the word say? He said, first thing, first thing, put on that belt. Have on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, know who you are. Know who you are. You walk supernaturally. You pray in tongues. You do stuff Moses couldn't do. Hallelujah. You're in right standing with God. When you pray, you don't have to go through nobody else. you got a direct line. And God, hallelujah, through that blood of Jesus, sees you as being righteous and say, my son and daughter, what do you need me to do? He goes on to say, praise God, make sure you prepare. The big word is prepare, preparation. Amen. Make sure you are always ready to walk in peace. Irene, quietness, assurance, glory to God. Amen. Above all, actually out in front of all, take the faith shield, the trust shield in God. 
Trust shield in this word. Wherewith you shall be able to quench the quench the word quench is to extinguish all the fiery darts. That's right, because man, circumstances and people can be like fire. Dun, 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 dun. Right? It can be like fire, baby. But know what it said. It will extinguish, even kind of roaring fire. But it would put the retardant flame of the Holy Ghost. Supernatural retardant foam on it. Glory to God. And shh. Because note the next word, all. All them fiery darts of the enemy. Take the helmet of salvation. Think right instead of thinking just that with your flesh. And take the sword which the spirit wills. That word wills means uses. The Holy Ghost in you uses what? Take the sword which the spirit uses, which is the ramos, the Greek word, spoken word of God out your mouth. Praying always with all prayer. Including praying in the spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. It's a big thing that you got that. You underutilize that. Hallelujah. You don't realize what you got in your arsenal. Glory to God. Praying with all prayer and supplication, definite request. Nope. In the spirit. Go back to Mark 16, new tongues. And watch thereunto with all perseverance. For other people besides you, the saints. Then Paul said, and pray for me too. Pray for your preacher so that I can speak the word, utter it correctly with anointing of the Holy Ghost. Pray for your preacher. Don't talk about your preacher. Pray for your preacher. Amen. Oh, that new tongue. New tongue, praying in the spirit. There are things that can us, but I know who to go to in prayer. What to pray for? The Spirit takes over from there. Oh, pray in the Spirit in a brand new tongue, speaking to my Father in the Son and with the heart believing. That the answer's one, praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, groaning in the Spirit is the sweetest way, for the Spirit knows my Father's will, and thus he prays my soul. And my body, I left standing dumb when I'm praying in the spirit in a brand new tongue. When the spirit, he makes intercession, there's no cause at all for despair. the mind of my father and he specializes in prayer oh yes praying in the spirit in a brand new tongue speaking to my father in the sun and with the heart believing 
certain people got it. Only certain people can do it. And what Jesus said. Time to agree with Jesus. Remember the day that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking with tongues for me? I was by myself. I was in my parents' basement. I read some of the verses I told you about, some of them. And then I read what Jesus said. He said, when you pray, believe, you receive, and you shall have in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And I said, Lord, your, your word said in Luke 11, that's one of the verses I read, that he will give the Holy Spirit, praise God, that manifestation to whoever asked him. I read it in Luke 11 chapter. Then it said, when you pray, believe, you receive. Now, I'm just a boy. I really don't know nothing about it. I ain't had real teaching yet. In fact, I've had almost no teaching yet, really, about any of this stuff. But I just read the Bible. And I said, well, and you can do it too. Lift your hands with me. Lift both your hands. Bow your head, close your eyes. If you're somebody who's not what they call spirit-filled speaking with tongues, you can do so right now. We're about to all do it. Because we found you're a believer. You already have the, are empowered. And so I, I said these words out loud, and you said it with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I saw in your word in Luke the 11th chapter. If I asked you, you grant this to me. Well, you also said, when I pray, believe I receive, I shall have. So in Jesus' name, I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I receive it now. Uh, he's in me now. Yes, he's in me now. And I have the ability to speak with other tongues. Now, Holy Spirit, that's in me now, give me utterance that I may do the supernatural. Pray in a new language, not given by man, in the name of Jesus. Now, you can't pray any kind of prayer with your mouth closed. So then open your mouth and everybody, praise God. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Let's pray in the Spirit. Come down on my shahad. Go ahead, pray Allah, speak it. How much some more home? Ve say more home. Say na maha. Yet tongue na masaha. For she no more. Oh maha. Yes, si fa se ma. Throw na maha na maka. Do le be si moha mesaha. For no say na ma clo no more. Say na ma. Say na ma. Glory to God. Anybody, any believer, any place, at any time, because the Holy Spirit's always on. He's always ready to build yourself up. And pray for others. Praise God. Now, while every head is bowed and every eyes closed in prayer, if you are not born again, you say, you know, I haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life, but I know I need to. 
I know I need to be saved. Inside, I know this is the truth. My head may not understand all the stuff this man's talking about today, but inside, I know what he's telling me is true. Yeah, you do know it. You know it inside. The Bible says if you will acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus is the highest authority of all. You will believe in your heart God raised him from the dead. The scripture said you'd be saved. It says with your heart you believe to righteousness. With your, with your mouth you acknowledge to your salvation. I like verse 13, Romans 10 says, whoever, that includes you, calls on him, the authority of the Lord shall be saved. So if you're not born again, I want you to pray along with me out loud. I'm going to have the whole church do it, and same thing online, those of you. Only thing I'm going to tell you, if you prayed this prayer for the first time, uh, amen, when I'm done praying, when we dismiss the service, I'm going to ask you to come forward because I will have my ministers here on what we call the blue line right in front of the platform here. I want you to come. If you're a person like that, because I want to give you some written material, I want to make sure you know what to do after this from here on, and you need that information. you got a few extra minutes to wait before you go eat somewhere. Okay, amen. So much everyone. Lift one hand towards heaven. That's where, come, that's where our help comes from, including you online with me. Pray this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died for me, hung on the cross for me, carried my sins for me, died in that grave for me, rose from the grave for me. He's alive now. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior and as the master of my life. Lord, I come back to you. I repent of sin, Lord. I accept your offer of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and cleansing me and making me born again. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for those who prayed that prayer with me, wherever there might be in the world. Thank you, Jesus Christ is now their Lord and Savior. Those have come back home to you. And thank you today, praise God, for the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking with tongues for many today. Thank you others received healing as they took communion today and are healed from the crown of their head to their soles of their feet. Thank you for these signs, wonders, and miracles. <laughs> In Jesus' name. That was such a powerful service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety, and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and we'll see you at the next service.